Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to add cogs to a bot and how to make commands that take multiple parameters. Here's the code that we left off with last time. To create a cog, we'll need to create another Python file that will contain a class for the cog. I will do that by creating a new file and I'll put in a folder called modules. So I'll say modules and I'll create a folder for this cog. You don't need to have a folder for the cog, you can have it just as a Python file, but if a cog will require multiple files, it might be useful to keep them all in a single folder. So for all my cogs, I'll make a folder, and we'll call this one ping, and we'll create a file in here called cog.py. Again, you don't have to call it cog.py, but you'll see later in the video why I'm naming it this way. Now inside this cog.py file for our ping cog, I'll say class ping, and inside of here, I'll say commands.cog. This will tell Discord that this is a type of cog, so it should inherit anything that a cog has. We can also specify over here a name, so if we wanted to, we can say ping. If you wanted to put more than one word here, like um, ping cog, that would be perfectly fine. Note that the default would be that the name of this class would be the name, but of course you can't put spaces in the name of the class, so if you want to have space in the name of your cog, you would have to specify a name parameter over here. Now we'll have to also import commands, and to do that we can say from discord.ext import commands. And now inside of this class, we can specify a description of the cog. We can say receives ping commands. We can create a constructor, we'll say define init. We'll give it um, the bot as a parameter, so that in this cog we're able to use parameter bot, the type of bot is a commands.bot, so you can specify that by saying colon commands.bot. That's also optional, but it's very useful when you want to debug to have the type specified. Now we can say self.bot equals bot, so now bot will be part of this object, so we'll be able to access it with self.bot anytime. Now the last thing we need to do to set up a cog is we'll make a setup function, we'll say define setup, and we'll also pass it bot over here, and we can say bot dot add cog, and we'll say ping, and we'll pass it bot. So now, when this cog gets loaded, it'll add the cog to the bot, meaning that any commands that we put inside this cog will be loaded onto the bot. There are currently no commands on this cog, but we'll be adding one. Now I can add this from over here, I'll copy this into the cog.py, but I'm going to have to change this. Instead of client.command, I'm going to use commands.command, and also we'll need to specify a self parameter since it's inside of a class, and ctx, I can specify the type here, I can say commands.context because that's the type, and it doesn't need to receive any additional parameters. This just checks for response to the bot and will respond pong. So now this creates a category called the ping category, and inside of here it has a command called ping, which with a lowercase p. In order to load this, we'll have to go into bot.py. I can remove these now. If we wanted to just load a single cog, we can say client dot load extension, and we can just say the path to that cog, or the, really the module. We can say modules.ping.cog, because modules is the name of this folder we put it in, and inside of that we made a folder ping, and then the name of the Python file is cog. So modules.ping.cog will refer to this module. But now, like I mentioned earlier, the reason I named it cog.py and made a folder like this is that it would be very easy to automatically load all of our cogs without having to come back here to keep adding more. So I'm actually going to make a for loop that goes through all of the different folders and modules and loads any cog.py file it can find. So to do that I'll say for folder in os.list directories. So this will list all the directories in modules. So modules is this directory which we have over here and it'll list all the directories inside. So it'll say ping and any other folders we create inside of modules. 
we can say if os.path.exists to check if this path will be found. We can say os.path.join and we can say modules which would be the first folder to look for and then folder because we're looking for a folder inside of there and if there's a cog.py then we'll want to load it. So to do that we can say client.load extension modules.folder.py so whatever name of the folder is it will load that module. Make this an f string so we can have the folder name inside of the string. So now we no longer need to come back here to add more cogs because this will automatically find any cog we create in this modules folder. So now let's run the bot. In Visual Studio Code, I can press F5 to start debugging. You'll see tutorial bot is connected to Discord. And now let's test this out. We'll say help and see what happens. Now you see we have ping, which contains a ping command, which checks for response in the bot. So before it was in no category, but now we have a category called ping that contains this command. And later on, I can show you how to make your own help command so you can put that in its own category as well. That's all there is to creating a cog. So let's create another cog and we'll make some more advanced commands. So now I'll create a new folder, which we'll call random. Make sure this is in the modules folder and not in the ping folder. So now we have random and inside of here, I'll create a cog.py. And now this automatically will get loaded when I load the bot because it's inside this modules folder and I have a folder which contains cog.py, which is the exact pattern that I'm looking for. So now over here, I'll just, I'll copy this cog because we have the general format over here. This one we'll call random. This will be the random cog. And we'll have some commands such as rolling dice and flipping coins and getting a random item from a list. So we can say returns random results. So now over here we'll also have to say random and we will change this command. The first command I'll show you how to make is a roll command. So now this command will take in dice. So we add a parameter to this list. We can say dice, which would be a type string, which will be the first argument that they pass to this command. And they pass arguments by simply putting a string of text after the command. So for example, to call this command, they would say question mark role because our command prefixes question mark as we define in the bot.py. And then they'd specify the parameters. So you can say like 2d6 will be the dice parameter. And every other word, if you add a space, let's say did 4d6, that would be a second parameter, which would not work with this command because it only takes one. We will show later how we can take multiple parameters and even take unlimited amount of parameters. So now we have dice as a parameter over here. So now what we want to do is split the dice into the amount and the type of die. So the format we're gonna take these in is like 2d6. Two refers to how many, and six is how many sides a die will have. So if you want to roll three 20 side dice, we would say 3d20. So how are we gonna do this? We'll have to split the, the string at the letter D. So we can say amount comma die equals dice dot split at the letter D. And now you need to be careful here because if they input an incorrect value, this would throw an error. It would specifically throw a value error. And we can check this out in the terminal by starting a Python. For you, it might be PY or just the word Python. Python 3 is how I'll be loading Python in my terminal. And now I can say, let's say 2d6 dot split d. And you'll see that this, as we expect, it makes an array with 2 and 6. But what if they had more than 1 in here? It makes an array with 3 values. If we wanted to unpack these values into 2 values, this will throw an error because there are too many values to unpack. I expected to have two values, but instead we had an array of three values. So this throws a value error. And the same happens if we have too few Ds. If we have only one, so not enough values to unpack, expected two got one. So both these will throw a value error. So if we want to avoid that issue, we can put this in a try and an accept. 
So this part would be the try. And we can put an accept over here. We can say accept value error. And over here we can say await ctx.send. Dice must be in the format. Let's say blank d blank. And we'll say example 2d6. Like that. So now if they do not use this command correctly, they'll respond with a message telling them what the correct format is for dice. And otherwise, we'll have this, these two values impact. We have an amount and a die. So now, we just need to roll these dice. How are we going to roll the dice? Well, how many of them are those? We have this save an amount. So we can say 4. We won't really need a variable here, so instead of saying 4i in range amount, we can say for a blank. This is a common way to make a variable that we won't be using is just to use an underscore. And now instead of amount, we should say int amount because amount is actually a string right now. But note that when we use the int on a string, it could throw a value error. So you see over here, if we say int with like a string, let's say hi, it throws a value error that says invalid literal for int with base 10 high. But if we had a number here, it turns that into a number. So since we already have this in a try catch with the value error exception, we won't need to add another try catch and we can do this in the same try catch and it'll also give the same error message and that's fine. So now that we have a loop, we can roll all the dice. So in order to make a random number, we'll have to import random. So I'll say over here, import random. Over here, we can say roll equals random dot random int, rand int. And we'll have the lower bound over here and the upper bound over here. So the upper bound will be the number of sides on the die. So you can say int die. And now this will give us a number, a random number between one and the integer uh, that's the maximum of the die. And now we can, let's say, make a string of all the rolls. You can say rolls equals start out as an empty string. And every time we roll, we can add that to the string. We can say rolls plus equals, let's say, as a string, we'll have the roll and we can have a space. And we could simplify this with an F string by just saying, over here F and put the roll over here. And now we just have the roll followed by a space. At the end, we can say await ctx.send and roll, and this will send a message back with all of the rolls. Now let's test this out. I'll press F5 to run our bot. And we'll type over here, roll 2d6. And you see over here we have a five and a four. And let's roll this maybe a hundred times, see what happens. See the lowest number we get is a one and the highest number we get is a six. So it looks like this is working correctly. You might also want to know the total of the dice if you're going to be rolling a lot of dice. So let's say total equals zero. And every time we make a roll, we'll add that to the total. So we'll say total plus equals roll. And over here, we can put over here rolls which will have rolls after that, and then a new line, backslash n will be a new line, and we can say um, sum is total. Now if we refresh this bot, we can say, let's say roll 100d20, and it gives us the list of rolls over here, and it's summed up to 1,000. Do it one more time, and it'll sum to 1,073. Now this command is specifically taking one parameter. What if we wanted it to take multiple parameters? I'll create another command over here, which would be a random choice from a list. So I'll also have to say commands.command .command over here. And we can say async def. It'll have to be asynchronous because we need to await these send commands. And we'll say choose. Now over here, we'll have to take self as a parameter. We'll take ctx, which is a commands.context. And we'll take in any number of arguments. So to do that, we can say star args. 
So this star will mean any number of arguments after self and ctx will be turned into an array called args. And if we wanted to, we could actually specify a number over here. If we wanted to say like first as a string, we could do that. And then everything after the first parameter we turn into an array. We won't need that for this choose command. We'll just say star args. And now we can just say choice equals random dot choice of args. And that should pick a random one from this list. We can say async ctx dot send choice. Sorry, that should be await, not async. And let's refresh the bot. And we'll tell the bot choose, let's say one, two, or three. And it chose two. Because every one of these words is a argument, so what we have here is a list. If we wanted to, we could say print args, and that will put that in the terminal, the arguments list when it, when we call the command. If I call this command again, so this time it shows three. But over here, we can say that the choices were one, two, and three. Now, one thing to note is if we wanted to pass a parameter that has multiple words, we would have to put it in quotes. So let's say we want to choose between first option, we can put that in quotes and that will be the first argument. We can have second option and third option and that way the bot will know that each of these are options and it can choose one. It chose the second option. Now we can look at our help command one more time and now we see we have a random cog which has a choose and roll. Looks like we forgot to add documentation for choose and we didn't change the documentation for roll. So I'll go ahead and do that quickly. Roll should be rolls a given amount of dice in the form blank d blank. And we can even add like an example usage. We can say example, and we can use some markdown over here. We can say question mark roll 2d20. And now, and reload the spot and you notice that we can ask for help on a specific command so we want to we can say question mark help roll and it'll tell us specifically for the roll command it looks like this won't really work right now with this format of help command I'll, I'll not put this markdown over here yet because this current help command won't really support that but when we get to a point where we have custom help commands we can do much more fancy things like that. And now let's copy this over here and I'll say chooses a random item from my list and we can say choose first option, second option, third option. And now we can say help. In the default help command it tells us just the first line of the thing and if we ask for help on a command, let's say roll, it will give us all of the details we, we gave. In the description, I've included a link to the Discord documentation, which is very useful for learning how to do new things with Discord. You can search for different types of commands and learn how they work. In, the, in upcoming videos, I will show you how to make help commands, how to make a welcome bot, and using many more features that bots are capable of doing. So subscribe if you're interested, give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.